world and welcome to a brand new episode of Azure Vlog. Today we are going to dive again deep into the world of cybersecurity. Today I would like to explain a little bit more about the deception technology in Microsoft Defender. So let me first talk about what deception technology is. Deception technology is not just a defense mechanism, it's almost a form of art in the cybersecurity realm. It involves creating an environment filled with decoys and false information to mislead attackers. And, and of course, detect them. By doing so, it turns the tables on the attackers using their own tactics and techniques against them. And that might sound a little bit crazy, right? Luring an attacker in your environment. Well, in an era where cyber threats are increasingly sophisticated, traditional defense mechanisms sometimes fall short. Deception adds just that extra layer, a kind of digital mirage that confuses and misleads attackers. This not only helps in an early detection, but also understanding the tactics and techniques that the attackers uses. This information can help you and protect your environment better. Before we go deeper into this topic, let me give you uh, a quick summarization of the pros on why you should configure and enable deception. As I just said, we can detect an attacker at an earlier stage by confusing attackers Organizations can detect malicious activities in an earlier uh, stage of the attack cycle. Deception techniques such as honeypots or deco systems can alert security teams to unauthorized access attempts before real systems or data are getting compromised. Another thing is wasting an attacker's time. And that sounds a little bit strange, but it's actually not. Attackers can only spend their time once by letting them engage with a honeypot or a decoy account. They are not spending their precious time and resources on your crown jewels. Um, another important thing is that we learn and understand how the attacker works. By observing your decoy environment, we can learn from the attacks that are happening over there. The attacks are getting executed by the attacker. In this environment, the attacker will most likely act the same and use the same techniques and tactics as he would use in your real environment. Understanding the attacker will put you in the winning side of the cat-mouse game. So Defender has deception technology in it. In a few minutes, I will show you how you can enable it and how you can configure it, but first, Let's grab a very good cup of coffee. was a very nice cup of coffee. The combination of cybersecurity and a good cup of coffee is literally the best. 
So now it's demo time. First, I'm going to show you how we can enable deception. Next up, we are going to configure it. And at last, I will uh, trigger an alert by a decoy file or something that we have deployed on one of our workstations. So here we are in the uh, security portal. The first thing that we need to do is enable deception. If I go to settings, I go to endpoints. If I scroll down in the advanced features, I scroll down a little bit down. We have a thing over here called deception. When I turn this on, I click save preferences. We can use deception. So I had to refresh this page in order to have my deception rules available over here. And by default, a default rule is created and we see that the status is in progress, which means that the deception rule, our default rule is currently deploying to our, uh, in this case, all Windows client devices. On the devices number over here, we can see the amount of devices on which the deception rule uh, has been uh, deployed. We can see what lure types are uh, being used. It's created by the system and it's created when we turned on the uh, deception feature. If I click on it, you'll see what actually is, uh, is deployed. If I go on edit, we can edit this default uh, rule. It has a name, it has a description. We have two lure types, basic and advanced. If I go to scope, I can uh, set the scope of my uh, uh, rule. I can work with tags over here. So I can set up some tags over here and only to devices that have corresponding tags, uh, this deception rule will be deployed. So next up we have our decoy. And as you can see uh, in the off time, I already added a uh, ad administrator user over here with the details decoy in it. So we can later on when we visit a workstation, see that this is the uh, decoy account. So this all looks uh, very cool and, and nice. We have some host setup and some uh, accounts. Okay, so it's good to know that the decoys are really deployed uh, to your uh, workstations, but they are not deployed in such a way that they can interfere with the, the regular user. They are deployed at places where normally only attackers uh, go. Uh, so things like the memory and, and, and stuff, you will not find them in your default settings and, uh, and stuff, uh, but they are really deployed to your workstations. Um, next up are the lures and the lures are actually the breadcrumbs that lead to the, the decoys. So what the attacker thinks are your crown jewels. Uh, I use auto generated lures over here, but you can, uh, add custom lures and yeah, here for you have to set up some files and, and stuff that does indicate that an account or a uh, one of your crown jewels does uh, exist. I will use this uh, auto generated over here. Next up, we have the summary, and here we can see uh, what we actually are going to deploy when I click on save. For now, we'll cancel this and we will wait until uh, it uh, is deployed. When it's deployed, I will come back to you and we are going to have a look at one of our workstations and see if we can trigger such a, uh, a deception rule. Okay, so that actually took a little bit longer. I'm almost recording these videos in my, uh, my evening time. And actually when I got to bed, it was still in progress. So it's uh, the day after. And if I switch over to my desktop, you'll see that the status is uh, switched to on and we have one device on which it is uh, targeted, which is uh, really cool. So we can now uh, play around with it and see how it works on our workstation. All right, so welcome to uh, my uh, demo machine. This is a Windows uh, 11 machine enrolled in uh, Defender for Endpoint. 
Uh, on this machine, the decoys are deployed. And if I go to ipconfig slash display DNS, you will see that some of my decoys are listed here. For example, this one, if we switch over to the defender portal, you will see that it's in the, in the list of decoys. Okay, so here we are back at Defender. If we click on the deception rule, you will see that I think this was the one listed with 31 uh, in it. Um, it's actually the decoy that is deployed to my machine. Let's now look what happens when we try to set up a RDP connection to uh, this DNS address. Let's switch over to my uh, demo machine and I'll show you around. Okay, so here we are back in my uh, machine. If I copy this DNS entry and I start a remote desktop connection and I'll paste this in. And when I click on connect, you'll see that it's trying to initiate the connection just as with a normal RDP connection. I think it will give us a uh, error soon that it's not able of uh, setting up the connection. Ah, here it is. Maybe remote uh, access to the server is uh, is enabled. And this is actually enough to trigger a alert in Defender for Endpoint. This is one of our decoys that we try to connect with. This is not something that a normal user would do. So the vendor will trigger a alert um, that is marked as a deception uh, incident. Let's have a look in Defender on how this would look like. Okay, so here we are in Defender. If I go to my incidents right now, you'll see that I have one incident with the tag deception on it. If I click on it, you'll see that it contains out of two alerts. Two times uh, is attempted to uh, set up a RDP connection to a deceptive host. That's uh, completely correct. I tried it uh, twice and only one time I recorded it uh, for you. So uh, this is completely valid what we see over here. What's actually interesting over here when I click on the uh, URLs, I click view, I'll see my uh, decoy host. Uh, entries over here. We tried to connect to the 31 and earlier I tried to connect to the, the 01. So this is uh, really nice. So this incident occurred on uh, my demo machine and we actually can go to that demo machine. If I go to uh, assets, you'll see that device over here. If I open the device page, we have the timeline over here. Also in the timeline is listed that we made a connection to our deceptive host, which I think is, uh, is really nice. And that wraps up our deep dive into the world of deception with Microsoft Defender. Today we've explored how deploying decoys can significantly enhance your cybersecurity strategy by confusing attackers and detecting them at an early stage. Remember, the strength of your security doesn't just lie in the defenses you know about, but also in the traps you set. Deception techniques in Defender provide an extra layer of defense, making your environment a maze for attackers where every wrong turn that they take exposes their tactics and buys you precious time. If you found this video interesting, please give a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm actually quite curious. Have you used deception in your security strategy? What is your experience like? Let's discuss it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on my latest uh, Microsoft security video. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll hope to see you in my next video. Bye.